My name is Contra. I build things, do open source, and create companies in San Francisco. Uh, you're probably familiar with a project that I made called Gulp. It's a build system. Uh, I think it was in some of the talks earlier. But uh, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about WebRTC in the real world. So I have a ton of stuff to burn through. Let's hold off on questions until the end. Sound good? So over the last few years, I've shipped real products utilizing WebRTC as a core technology. It wasn't easy, but through the struggles, pitfalls, and pain, I learned how to harness this powerful technology and create real things for real people. I want to teach these lessons I've learned so that you can skip the struggle and get straight to building things that matter. So before we dive down, we should do a quick recap of where WebRTC came from and what it's all about. It all started in 2010 with Google acquiring the rights to a bunch of new video codecs. The most notable acquisition from these purchases was a company called On2, uh, which owned the VP8 codec. It's the codec behind WebM. Almost immediately after this acquisition, Google released the source code under a BSD license so anybody could use it without worrying about lawyers. This was a huge charity offering for the open web, which had been struggling to secure a stable codec everyone could rally behind since the video tag was added. A year later, Google released the initial code and idea behind WebRTC. The reception was kind of like, eh, this looks pretty cool, but nobody really saw the practical implications of the technology. It was kind of just demo tech. Six months after the code release, we saw the first browser WebRTC implementation in Chrome 23. This triggered a huge uptake in people toying with the new APIs because now any web developer could build something without having to mess around enabling experimental flags in about config. And for the next two years, the WebRTC specification evolved and the code evolved with it. Things broke constantly, releases were plagued with bugs, browsers crashed, uh, many tears were shed, mostly by me. This was a dark time to be building things on WebRTC. Uh, during this phase, I was working on a Skype competitor that used WebRTC and spent sleepless nights figuring out why Chrome on Android couldn't call Firefox on Mac or why Chrome on Windows and Chrome on Android calling each other caused a segmentation fault and both browsers just crashed. Um, so I think really it was just way too early to build something real on top of WebRTC and a lot of people got burned by this. But in 2013, Firefox became the first browser outside of Chrome to add WebRTC.